Okay, thank you, Nico. We want to, I want to uh, <laughs> thank everyone for being here, and thanks to the Tech Talk organizers for letting us uh, inject our, our little bit here. Uh, it's, uh, it's, there's also nothing like uh, giving a talk after a James Webb talk and having the, the, the room full of people who are shy to escape. So thanks for staying. <laughs> what, what we want to, yeah, maybe you can leave later. But <laughs> so we are really excited to give this talk to you. We are really, um, the, the main purpose of what, what we want to do today is to show you what we're doing and to, uh, to invite you in, essentially, to, to help to tell us that we want your collaboration. Um, what you what you're gonna see today, I'm gonna give a little demo of the of the beta version of the multimission interface that we are developing, and it's done uh, essentially by all these people you see here. And uh, so, if you like what you're gonna see, you should thank them because they are doing an amazing job, and it's really it's been very very hectic these last last days. But I think, uh, in to be fair, we should we should also acknowledge the first team that started this uh, idea promoted by Danny Lennon last year. Uh, and I want to, uh, I want to um, um, be grateful to Andy Pollock, Michael Rosa, uh, Iñaki Ortiz, and Nacho Leon, who were in the, in the earlier team and are not, are not working on this currently. But of course, many of the ideas that you see, the design was already conceived back then. And then here you see the list of people <coughs> from the current ESDC that are working on the project, uh, most of us part-time, but uh, we, of course, uh, we, we are not doing this in isolation, and that's the whole point of this talk. We need, we need to have this cooperation between the experts in this archives group and the experts in the missions. We need to have this cooperation ongoing, and you're gonna see examples of how, when, that, when we are doing this, we can do very, very good things. In particular, we want to acknowledge uh, that the CDS uh, people from Strasbourg are helping us a lot with the, with the Aladdin visualization software. Uh, of course, we've got a lot of help from people who aren't directly working on it from the archive group, from the ESDC. Uh, we are getting lots of excellent support from CSD, in particular from Alejandro Lorca, who's allowing us to run uh, lots of lots of map making processes in the grid, putting it, taking it to its limit, apparently. Uh, also, Guillaume Belanger from Integral has been working a lot to give us post-process integral maps that we can integrate. Uh, also from XMM Newton, I want to acknowledge Nora and Pedro Rodriguez, who have been working a lot with us as well to help us essentially post-processing the XMM data to make the maps you're gonna see, which are amazing, and uh, you will see it by yourself. So we are really excited with how, how uh, this whole thing is working and how we working together, what we are what we are managing to do. Uh, I also want to thank Eva Verdugo from the Herschel team who has given us footprints, project, project footprints, etc. From Xavier Dupac also and Marcos for Planck, etc. Okay, quick recap. What is the multimission interface? This was an idea that started last year to think, okay, what would be a, uh, the ideal interface for scientists to access the data that our missions produce? And uh, we, we think it has to be multi wavelength, of course, because astronomers nowadays uh, don't really necessarily want to restrict themselves to one instrument or one or one band, they want to get everything that's there. It needs to be project agnostic, so our missions are very complex, so we cannot expect people to read the millions of documents we produce per every single mission, so it needs to be simplified. And it needs to allow exploration, which, you know, is, is not so easy to do. So when uh, last year Andy Pollock and Michael Rosa polled people, polled scientists at ESTEC and here about what their ideal, ideal uh, interface for getting data would be like, that's, uh, this, they told us many things. This is the word cloud. The larger the word, the more times it was repeated. And it was clear that what people wanted is to have quick and easy access to the science data. So that's what we are trying to do. Uh, currently, the multi-mission interface is a web application that sits in front of all the mission archives. Uh, and it's fetching files from all these archives and presenting them to the user in a, we hope, easy to understand way. The, what, what you're going to see today is a beta release. So we've done, we've done a lot of work from the prototype. There has been a lot of re-engineering work. At, but I think what we have now is much more robust. It's, a, it's an application that is ready to go live uh, soon. It has the main ingredients. It has all sky maps. So what we do is to take a whole archive and we project it into a multi-resolution map. 
And those maps are amazing, you're gonna see them because they give you a completely different uh, access to all those observations, which are in individual files. Uh, then we also have footprints because we need this tool to be very precise, such that you only get observations that contain your target of interest in the field of view. And with the footprints, we connect to the files in the archives. Uh, so there are two main <coughs> use cases. One is the most, mo the more modern one is one where you explore the multi-wavelength sky, we say. And actually, you, you will see that in the application, there is a section where you see what skies there are available. And then you just can play with them and explore freely in the sky. And then, of course, more traditionally, more, more, more traditional uh, workflows are single and multiple target searches. So you can search for what's there for my target of interest or my sample. That we can do. This only works with imaging data and catalogs. And uh, we've, we've copied here all the, all the data that we have put in this in this in this uh, beta release and that we want to uh, make uh, that we want to make public you can see it's a wealth of data mm, decades of observations from observatories from the gamma to the radio and it's all there all the imaging data all the science data for all these missions will be there and all the catalogs that have been produced with the data from these missions precious data precious material is going to be all there um, so we've been working uh, a lot on uh, refactoring the code, making it prepare because we are we are aware that this might have, we hope, many users, and uh, we we want to make sure that the application is going to resist the load. So we are, there's a lot of work that you won't see in the interface, but has happened underneath, and uh, we are making this tech talk here when we want to uh, <coughs> make a better release to you, such that you can actually play with the application and check whether it's scientifically correct, whether the data is what it should, and give us the feedback. That's what we want. That's why we're giving this tech talk. And in a month, we are going to work from here to the, le to the end of October in finalizing the hardware requirements and making the application robust for a potential big <coughs> inflow of users. And uh, after after, by the end of October, there's an AIDES conference, and we're going to give a focus demo, and the idea is to make the public the, the first release of the application by then. Okay, so before we uh, move on now, let me, let me actually show it to you what it looks like. So for those of you who haven't seen it yet, uh, it's a web page, uh, which is just showing you the sky. The, um, you can zoom in, and um, this, these maps that we, are do, that we have been running essentially give you more and more detail the more you zoom in. So you can look at the, you can explore the sky, you can pan and drag, you can go anywhere you want, and you see how the sky looks like in that wavelength. Now here in this, in this uh, oh thank you, in this uh, skies menu, you can see all these wealth of missions uh, ordered by, uh, by wavelength or by frequency, and you can, you can, you can actually, <coughs> by selecting any of these, you can look how the sky looks like in X-rays. And we are looking exactly at the same part of the sky, right? This is the optical, the Andromeda galaxy in optical. How does it look in X-rays? It looks like this. But this, this, is, this map you're looking at is the map that the, the CDS people had done and which is available in Aladdin. And now I'm gonna show you the map that we have done with the, with the help from the XMM SOC. I hope you realize, you, you can see immediately the, the, the big difference. Uh, essentially, to make this second map, We've done, uh, with the help of Pedro Rodriguez, a lot of filtering, selecting the right data. Essentially, you're using the expert knowledge from the XMM team to make, to make a map with this multi-resolution technology, but with the best quality data. And of course, what is exciting about this, which is already very good, is that <coughs> everything that XMM has ever observed is in this map. So, uh, if you really have ever thought of analyzing data, having access to the data in this way, for us, is really groundbreaking. Now, there's more things we can look at. Let me go, for example, to uh, a famous target. Uh, this is the M51 galaxy, very, very well-known object, typical first light of many, observa many ESA observatories. That's the optical image from the ESS. We can look at the, uh, again, we can look at the CDS map, and now we can look at the ESA map. Now, there is also we also we have also created these all multi-resolution maps with HST data, and look at what happens when you do this. Of course, HST is exquisite spatial resolution, so you can continue zooming in and zooming in and zooming in until you reach the pixel level. 
and it's all there. I can also zoom out until I see the whole sky. That's the beauty of this uh, HIPS technology. Um, we have, we've also done the same thing with ISO, with Akari. Now let's have a look at the packs uh, of the Herschel maps. This is the Herschel map of M51. Really nice with, com with color compos composite. But again, if we zoom out, the nice thing we have, the, the, the nice thing we have here is that I don't know. This screen probably doesn't show, but the the the, the screen is full of little squares, which were all the observations that Herschel has ever taken. There's a, you, see, you might see a cross here and a lot of, uh, some patches. This stripe here is the galactic plane, which was surveyed by a program. All these areas here are star forming regions, that's of Hucus. Uh, you can see that the outer part of the galaxy is much less populated, that's Orion. Most studies in Orion are one pixel here. But here you see the whole structure, so you can do really comparative studies of what's, what's going on there. And now, it's, now we can actually benefit from the multi-resolution. We see an interesting region, we, we keep zooming, and keep zooming, and you look at this detail. I mean, we've, we've spent more time than we should uh, play with these things because it's just amazing. I mean, it's beautiful. And the best thing of all is science data. We haven't done anything. It's the pipeline products that we have done here. So for us, it's really exciting. You look at this bubble, for example. When you start su sufficiently zooming in, you find there's a little source in the middle. That's the, that's the, that's the source producing this bubble. And it's all real. I mean, there's no, there's no Photoshop here. It's just <laughs> what it is. Uh, let's, let, let's have a look at the uh, galactic center, for example. So that's the galactic center. Uh, you can now go and say, OK, well, actually, this is, of course, it's very bright in far infrared. Let's look at the in, in mid infrared ISO data. There you go. That's the, the whole ISO cam mosaic of the galactic center. OK, now. This is the exploration uh, workflows. I mean, just looking at the sky, and that's, we want to give the application to you such that you do the same, and you check whether things are, make sense or not. Uh, OK, I forgot to mention that beside all of this, of course, I, uh, I, I, I want to show you also the, um, the, the Planck maps. So together with all these nice maps, of course, we have maps which were from the beginning uh, all sky, but that which, which we have also regenerated and, uh, and add it to the tool such that you can actually look at the sky essentially from anywhere between gamma rays to uh, submillimeter radio wavelengths by just clicking on this pull-down menu. We think that's very exciting. I mean, that's going to open who knows what. But uh, it's, certainly, it's certainly great to be able to do these things. I mean, we are really, we are really excited with all this. Um, and then this folder down here are maps that come from CDS, and we've separated them very clearly. Why? Because the maps that we do ourselves are, are going to have the ISA stamp. It's going it, to be very clear. These maps have been done with the knowledge from the expert. OK, now let's go for, let's go for, uh, for another nice target. Another example of why, you know, why it's great to have uh, you know, all these different data sets together. Let's look at the M82, the CIGAR um, galaxy, they call it. You see, the, it's, a spiral, it's a spiral galaxy which we should kind of add on. So we see just this line. When we look at this in the, in the nice X-ray image, what we see is a perpendicular structure. That's a <coughs> super gigantic jet that it's been emitted, and it emits in X-rays. So you can, you can just by swapping from X-ray to optical, you are doing science. I mean, you're discovering things. This object was known to have these super powerful jets, but you can find them with the MMI in any other galaxy, just by playing with the images. Uh, now, but there's more you can usually astronomers want to do. Let's put the ACS uh, mosaic of this object. And now let's, let's zoom in a little bit. And now let me call your attention to these two histograms in the bottom, ESA observations and ESA catalogs. Here, what the application is doing is to look to search in real time uh, for this particular exact geometry in the sky is looking for all these in the archives for observations whose footprints overlap with the piece of the sky I'm looking at. And, and if I hover on top of the, uh, and you see it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's project agnostic. It says there are this many observations in gamma, this many in X-rays, this many visible, this many in infrared. If I hover on top of the histogram, it says X-rays. There are 11 XMM Newton observations. So I just click on that. And a, a new tab appears with the set of observations. And if I zoom out, actually, I can see the footprints. So I just select a couple. You see, when I click on them, 
they get white because those are the ones I've selected. That's, that's how I recognize exactly what I'm selecting. Let me put the DSS background because uh, it's going to be maybe nicer. And uh, okay, so I've selected a couple of XMM observations. Now let's look uh, at the Herschel ones. So if I click on Herschel, I see I see all these all these other XMM uh, sorry Herschel observations in this C, uh, pale blue color. The same. I can select. I can click on some of them, and I'm selecting them. And I can do the same. I can I can do the same with the HST observations. Let me zoom in a little bit. And then I can say, okay, so how many HST observations there are in this region? And there you go. Those are all the footprints. Here, of course, we've done a lot of improvements because HST has been running for 25 years. So there's always more HST data, ma many, ma many more HST observations than observations from any of the other missions, just because it has been living for longer. But it's the same. You can select them. And once you have all this, you, you might notice this very uh, very uh, small download button here that we will probably put somewhere else. You just click there, and it's and it's downloading a tar file to directly to your system with a selection of files that we will see whenever it's done. Uh, let me now uh, look at while that's downloading because of course I mean those we are getting a number of a number of files there. So now let's look also at catalogs. You can do also imaging and catalog science without downloading anything here. So let me put now the ACS map. Let me zoom in a little bit. And now let's look at the catalogs. Here you're going to see uh, there, are, there are lots of, let me close and open this again. You can see there are ESA catalogs ordered in all the whole range from gamma, X-rays, visible, infrared, and radio. These are catalogs produced by ESA missions. If I hover on the gamma, it says integral one. I click and you get and you realize that there is a there's a point source there just in the middle of the galaxy that there's a gamma there's a gamma source there you can also go to the x-rays and it says okay x-rays slew there's there's another source and it's here let me put this in uh, these other coordinates because i don't, I don't yeah. there's an x-ray source here so there's a gamma ray source here and an x-ray source here we are looking on top of an optical hst image we can also check whether there are Hubble, uh, sorry, optical sources. And Hubble just released a Hubble source catalog, which is a huge catalog with uh, 29 million sources. All the little yellow boxes are sources in the optical detected by the Hubble Space Telescope in its lifetime. So you see there are, there are lots of sources. And not only that, there is a radio. Uh, there is a radio column, which currently is coming from Planck. If I click here, I get radio sources. So look what we've done. In a few seconds, clicking a few times, we've queried all the data from gamma rays to radio that are available from science missions in this particular object. You can do the same anywhere else you want. That's the, that's the beauty of this. Um, so what else? Okay, yeah, let's look at the tar file we got. We, we opened the, the finder. There is the star I just, I just downloaded. So what we have is a, is a summary file that tells me you know, what I've retrieved. You, you might notice that we, there's, no, there's no authentication here. I mean, I've got this file without having to log in or having to tell who I am, and we will, we will take care internally of tracking who's downloading what, because we need to know that. But we don't want this user to have to register if we are, <coughs> if we, if we are just giving them public data. So the, the whole goal of the application is to simplify the access to the high quality data. Uh, so here you see the summary of what we retrieved. Uh, and then you see the three folders, Herschel, Okay, in Herschel, this is still this is still something we need to uh, we need to fix. But essentially, you have the access to the. It will be just one file, but essentially you have the access to the Herschel observation. So if I, I I click on it, that's there. There you have my Herschel observation of the of the M82 center. If I look at the HST, there I have my HST map. I unpack it and uh, I open it, and I can do the same with the XMM. There you have the XMM maps. So I've loaded. I've just inspected this galaxy. Let me zoom in a little bit uh, and like go like focus on the center. Then I I match the frames and I just got. You see that's the funny. Look at the feel of the HST compared to the maps from. Uh, that's the that's the infrared map of the galaxy. That's the X-ray map of the galaxy and that's a optical HST map probably of the core of the galaxy. And I just retrieve them like this from this interface. Okay, final thing. Uh, 
there is a target. There is a. Of course, most people. I mean, this is the single single user uh, workflow. But me, most most users uh, work with samples. So you can, of course, also upload a target list. You just upload it. What it what the tool is doing now is to send this list, which is currently uh, is just names. But of course, it will be I'm act actually it's going to it's going to take coordinates as well. It's, it sends them. It sends uh, the list to Simbad. And then it translates all the names into coordinates, and Simbad gives also an indication of the size of the object. If that is known, if it's an extended source, Simbad will say this source is that big. So we get this uh, menu here on the right, uh, where we can go and visit all these objects. You just click on them, and it goes and takes you there. Let me close this uh, panel for now. Doesn't know Cygnus X1. Ah yes, Cygnus X1. It didn't recognize it, so it's a starting font. Right? Of course, there are lots of things that we need to that we can do to help people finding objects. But you can, you will be able to put coordinates as well. So once you have this, visiting these objects is as easy as just clicking on this uh, on these regions. It will take you to there, and once you're there, you can go and visit. Okay, so how does this nice optical galaxy looks like in X-rays? This is how it looks like. How does it look like in infrared? Well, if it's observed. This is this is how it looks like, and you can of course go and uh, like click on play here and just sit back and enjoy <laughs> the show. While you do this, that's the best thing. While you do this, the application every every field that it's visiting is querying all the archives, so it's getting the information about those, those precious data files, data science ready files from all those missions in those fields. So whenever whenever you're done inspecting your targets, you can come to the download button and get that precious collection of data. And that's the end of the demo. Uh, let me now uh, just finish by saying um, that the whole point of this, uh, of this talk is to get you, uh, get you in. So we're going to uh, distribute this presentation. We're going to give you the URL in a couple of days such that you can actually play with it. And we here, this presentation, you will have access to our to the wiki we have for the project, where we want to keep constant updates of what we are doing, which data sets are we ingesting, which problems are we tackling, etc. You will have access to the ticket system, such that you can, if you are using it and find problems, you can directly, uh, you know, file the the back uh, system yourself. That saves time, and you can check the backlog. That is where we uh, synchronize, that we program what we do every week. Uh, and there's a help desk, which I don't know if I have opened. Ah, yeah, of course. You can also open the help desk if you right click on the image at any time. You can click on this tell us, and this will take you to the help desk. So we've created a help desk where people can send easily feedback to us of any kind. We want to know if you find something that is not working, if you find something that you don't like, or if you have an idea which is you think we should we should implement and you just want to share it with us. Uh, okay, that's I think that's pretty much it. Um, so essentially, uh, and I have also created a MMI community in ISA Connect for those of you who, who use it, and that's another source of feedback. So you can go and write in on on the fora there, whatever you want. And the idea is to get all the inputs, and then we will do the work of uh, depending on how many how many times different things are requested. That will that will uh, change the priority of the different features requests, etc. And that's and we, uh, we essentially need to get all the feedback. We will do this sor sorting of priorities based on how many people are asking for the things, and uh, and that's how we will continue developing. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>
Yeah, what are certain yeah. which are surely in the in the yeah, XMM catalog. That's the type of validation we need you to do. Okay. I mean, uh, we cannot we cannot know all these things. We also yeah. expect there should be sources or shouldn't know, but you the experts know that. Yeah. So you should be the ones who tell us whether there is something wrong. But what we have done uh, actually maybe the experts should explain how it's done. But so uh, it's the same catalog we have in the archive. Um, there is a flat maybe both. We are using both. So this, this no, is querying the list of observations, so this is and this is querying catalogs. Yes. Dr. Five. We're using a, a, a quality flag that is uh, flag equal good, and also we're using the below view, the, so this would be the, the quality. By the way, now that we're talking about... We have about another question here. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you download the, 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 the data, mm -hmm. by default, uh, the, probably the most processed mm -hmm. data are, are selected. Yes. This is, uh, is, is always done by default. Yes. So that's something that's that's something very important that where we need the col collaboration from the experts. So the idea is to select for each observation the single best quality file to give. We don't want to dump a tar on them and have them like having to deal with hundred tars. So yes. we need to select, make a compromise. Yes. What is the single file you could give to a non expert? And that's yes. the file we want yes. to use. Yes. As you know, so you have many, many many levels of yeah. yeah. one percent uh, Bruno has clicked in the excellent the sloop. Ah, yes. He's no, the train yeah, train that was the sloop. Yeah. He has clicked in the excellent the sloop. He has clicked in the excellent the sloop. Yes. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. okay. Next one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Bruno, uh, do, do we need uh, yeah. a master yeah. in the state? Yeah. Because you are querying many archives and uh, you are retrieving many data, so we need a fast connect. Can we do it for, from home? Yeah. That's what we hope. I mean, the the that that you sh I mean the experts should tell you. I mean, I don't know. Of course, it depends what you are doing. If you, if you click, for example, this example of clicking so many sources from uh, Hubble, it's a it's a it's a very simple file, the JSON file. But of course, you need to have something on the But I think we are trying to minimize a lot, a lot of the amount of data coming from the server to the client in order to prevent it. Not in this application. So this application will let you download, and then it's your business, it's your duty to do the cross match because, of course, there are huge differences in PSFs. There are there are offsets problems, astrometry problems. So maybe in the future it does cross correlate for you, but but. The, but we think we should just give the catalogs and then the uh, users should know what to do with them. This is very important to the other archive than the other one. The other one should have some echoes map facilities. Xavier? You have plans to include uh, data from missions outside ESA as well? And yeah. what are your plans on that? Yeah. I'm thinking Spitzer, yeah. Chandra. Well, that's a very good question because, of course, when we have shown this to non-ESA people, they've said, ah, I would like to have here the Spitzer data, I would like to have the Chandra data. We would love to do it, and so what, what we plan to do is to make a uh, document how they, what they should do if they want to do it, if they want to have their data here. They should create an OSCI map, and they, sh they should give us a table with a list of observations and their footprints with certain format. If they do, probably we can do it. But it's more political. But you, do, you don't plan to do it yourself, so it's like no. to get the not to start with. I mean, we have sufficient data here that uh, <laughs> you know we don't. We are not shortage of data. But yeah, that's. Will there be a scripting access from Python, let's say? Or yes, yes. All so this. I mean, uh, I mean again, the experts, please respond <laughs> that question. <laughs> scripting access. Other question? Yeah, he asked whether <laughs> there's going to be a scripting access to this. The server is a PAP server. Uh, there are also tools in a uh, scripting to invest to, to access PAP server. So that implies that, yes. So you can use, if you publish this app uh, entry for the server, you should be able to uh, ask that to the server. Mm -hmm. Marco? Uh, you have in the archive a lot of spectra already. 
Ah, yes. Stop thinking how that can be a Yes, yeah, I yeah, forgot to mention that. This release, uh, it's only imaging and catalogs because, you know, it was hard enough to do that. <laughs> but uh, mostly because the footprint should give you an idea of where the data comes from, a very precise idea of where the data comes from, because for you it might be very important is my, my object inside or outside the field of view. We need to do the same for spectra, and for spectra it's much harder, because you need to select what part of the sky did you structure the spectrum for on. So that needs extra time to work with the teams, to identify what's the best way of doing it, because sometimes the pipelines don't even regi like re register in the headers what was the structure, where was the structure done. But yeah, the idea is to to have the same thing with uh, with uh, with spectra. Actually, for yeah, yes. So for HST, we already have the spectroscopic footprints, but we don't have them for the other missions. So we need to we need to meet them. Any other question? I have just wondered, if it's so nice, uh, is there any compatibility with PSA to play around with, let's say, Saturn as an object, HST yeah. observations, and everything? Yes, that's, uh, that's a very good question. We, I mean, I, I wonder whether maybe, you know, Maria or Elena can answer the plans to connect this to the planetary moving yeah. object. It's the same thing for Saturn. That could be or either, maybe, I don't know. So, it's <laughs> nice tricky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yes, maybe there are two ways to do it. First, to plan the observation that contains moving objects in this new support of this observation, or try to, to move the point of view of, or to the satellite because it has to move and try to identify the moving objects. We, we have plans to do that, but uh, it's weird. Sorry, one, fu one final thing I forgot. We've done this whole sky map source with, uh, with XMM optical monitor data. So you have these whole sky maps for the OIM observations, <coughs> which, as you know, have three filters in the ultraviolet and three filters in optical. And look how this galaxy looks like. These maps are here in the XMM tab. So l have a look at how this galaxy looks like as observed by OM data. So we have the OM catalog as well. And, uh, and, and so you can also look at these color compositions with the three ultraviolet of the three optical bands from OM. So we <coughs> hope this is going to help many people discover data sets for their targets of interest, science ready, that before they were not so easy to find. And we hope this is going to help them find them out. Maybe someone wants to do some UV study, and this data is great for that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you again.